Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Well folks, since today is Mother's Day, I've got something very special to share today. But first, how about a little backstory? About a year ago, I looked at Nickelodeon's first big screen Nicktoon movie, The Rugrats Movie, which was requested by Marisol Barabia. And while it was a decent movie to watch during my childhood, there were some ups and downs, though I did like the plot involving the relationship between Tommy and his new brother Dill, who was at first loud, spoiled, and mischievous. But two years later, the Rugrats received a second theatrical movie where they traveled to the beautiful city of lights, Paris, France. And that's what I'll be looking at today. Released on November 17th, 2000, the movie is Rugrats in Paris. So, let's get started. In this movie, Chucky Finster wishes to find a new mom, and his dad Chaz plans to start dating. Shortly later, Tommy's dad Stu is unexpectedly summoned to Euro Reptar Land, an amazing theme park in Paris, France, where the animatronic Reptar is malfunctioning, much to the displeasure of manager Coco LaBoche. During their time in the city of romance, the Rugrats' big adventure turns out to be more than glamour, fashion, and smelly cheese. Chucky learns that when it comes to princesses and potential mommies, things are not always what they seem, and for Chaz, finding the right woman can be difficult in any language. However, when the dislikable Coco gets interested in Chaz, thanks to Angelica's suggestion, Chucky and his friends must swing into action while learning new lessons about courage, loyalty, trust, and above all, true love. So, what do I think about this movie? Well, ever since I saw it in theaters, I loved it. In fact, not only is this a major improvement over the first Rugrats movie, but this has also got to be one of my favorite animated sequels ever. And to further explain why I love this movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, there's not a lot of trivia to talk about, except for the fact that this movie was Nickelodeon's second animated movie to hit the big screen, and it takes place before the show's seventh season. Now, what are my thoughts on the animation? Well, like the first movie, the animation stays true to the style of the show, but with some high definition due to the cinema budget. Also, I think it's a lot better than the animation from the upcoming Revival series that'll be streamed on Paramount Plus this month. And the reason why I think that is mainly due to childhood nostalgia reasons. Plus, I like how the animators not only depicted Paris, but also brought life to Euro Reptar Land, which looks like the most amazing theme park that I've ever seen in any animated movie. I mean, they have a tsunami-shaped hotel, ninja security guards, a boat ride that shoots green goo everywhere, and the longest slide in the world. Also, I hate to quote Animat, but I think this theme park puts the Disney Imagineers to shame. No offense, guys. As for the story, well, in my eyes, it's a lot better than the Rugrats' first theatrical movie. Plus, I like the adventure that the babies have during their time in Paris. Also, there are times where the story can be very emotional and heartwarming. Also, my favorite part of the movie is when the Rugrats use the Reptar robot to go through the streets of Paris to reach Notre Dame. Speaking of which... I can't believe it's been about two years since that legendary church caught fire, and I'm hoping that it can be fixed up by 2024, as French President Macron predicted. Also, like most movies, there are a few flaws in this film. For example, there are some mature humor, like Chucky getting a wedgie, Dill puking on Coco, and Coco's dress getting torn revealing her undergarments, even if she does deserve it. As for the movie's soundtrack, well, while some of the songs can be pretty corny, some of my favorites in this movie include 
Life is a Party by Aaron Carter, When You Love by Zanette O'Connor, Chuck E. Chan by Isaac Hayes and Alex Brown, I Want a Mom That'll Last Forever by Cindy Lauper, and of course, Who Let the Dogs Out by Baja Men. And now let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought him to life. The leader of the Rugrats, Tommy Pickles, is voiced again by Elizabeth G. Daly. Best known as the voice of Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls, Rudy Tabuti from Chalk Zone, and Young Mumble from Happy Feet. As usual, Tommy is brave, imaginative, and adventurous. However, in this movie, Tommy is reduced from main character to supporting character, which I can easily roll with since there are several episodes in the show where Tommy is not the main focus. Plus, I think Tommy is very encouraging, and I like when Tommy uses his dad's Reptar helmet to operate the Reptar animatronic. Our main character, Chucky Finster, is voiced by the late Christine Cavanaugh, best known as the first voice of Babe, Gosselin Mallard from Darkwing Duck, Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory, and Bunny Rabot from Sonic Set AM. In my opinion, Chucky is very relatable in this movie due to him wanting a new mom. Plus, I think his Wawa teddy bear is very special since his late biological mom, Melinda, gave it to him before she passed away from a terminal illness. Also, it kind of reminds me of Flurry Heart's Whammy. Also, I like the part where Chucky learns to be brave by fighting Jean-Claude Robo martial arts styled and when he saves his dad from a bad wedding. The rest of the gang includes the twins, Phil and Lil DeVille, both voiced by Kat Susie, and Tommy's brother, Dill, voiced by Tara Strong. In my eyes, Phil and Lil are equally as thick as thieves, especially when they play with a toy reptar and a robo snail. And Dill, while sometimes a tad gross, is pretty smart for a three-month-old baby, and he knows a bad person when he's with one. Plus, I like the scene where Dill tells Angelica off for conspiring with Coco LaBouche. Speaking of which, next we come to Tommy and Dill's obnoxious cousin, Angelica, voiced by Cheryl Chase. To me, as usual, Angelica is very dislikable due to her spoiled and bratty personality, and I thought it was very wrong of her to help Coco LaBouche trick Chaz into marrying her in exchange for her own pony and parade float. However, at least she made up for it by telling everybody at Notre Dame, including Mr. Yamaguchi, about Coco's true nature. Also, I can't believe that her parents, Drew and Charlotte, let Angelica watch the Godfather movie. Why? It's because the Godfather is rated R. In other words, no kid under the age of 17 would have been allowed to watch it at all. Next is Tommy and Dill's dad, Stu, voiced by the late Jack Riley. In my eyes, Stu is a brilliant mechanic and inventor, and I think his Reptar robot has got to be the most brilliant project he's ever worked on. Not only that, but I think its mechanisms are very simple to operate while wearing a helmet and two red gloves in order to control the robot's movements. In fact, it's so simple that even a child can do it. Chucky's dad, Chaz, is voiced by Michael Bell. In my opinion, despite being insecure at times, Chaz is a likable dad, and after the wedding scene at the beginning of the movie, Chaz decides to start dating in order to find a good wife. Plus, in this movie, it's revealed that Chaz's favorite poem is Children Are My Life. Plus, I like that he considers himself and Chucky as a team. Next, we come to the Pickles family dog, Spike. In this movie, Spike doesn't really have a big role, but while in Paris, he falls in love with a stray French poodle named Fifi. And in my opinion, I think Spike and Fifi make a sweet couple. And I like when they have a pizza dinner in an alley, which kind of feels reminiscent to Lady and the Tramp. Also, I like the part when Spike attacks Jean-Claude at the end of the movie. Now let's move on to the new characters, starting with Kira Watanabe, voiced by Julia Kato. To me, 
Kira is such a wonderful character due to her sweet and loving personality. Plus, I think she makes a great new mom for Chucky. Also, like with Chaz, Kira loves the Children Are My Life poem. Next we come to Kira's daughter and my favorite character in the movie, Kimmy, voiced by Dion Kwan, best known as Trixie Tang from The Fairly Odd Parents. In my opinion, Kimmy is joyful, brave, imaginative, and adorable. Plus, I like the part where she takes Tommy and the gang to a Japanese palace at the volcano. And I also like that Kimmy became Chucky's new sister. Next we come to the main antagonist, Madame Coco LaBouche, voiced by Susan Sarandon. Best known from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, James and the Giant Peach, Hell and Back, Enchanted, and Speed Racer. Now, I gotta tell you, I do not like this lady at all, due to her cold-hearted, child-hating nature. Plus, her true intention to get married to Chaz is just so that she can get promoted to president of Yamaguchi Industries. Plus, I know that Susan Sarandon has a lot of fun playing villains, and I applaud her for that. However, I think her role as LaBouche makes her role as Queen Narissa more likable. Last but not least, we have Coco's bumbling henchman, Jean-Claude, voiced by John Lithgow. Best known from the 1984 Footloose movie, Santa Claus the Movie, Shrek, Pitch Perfect 3, and the 2019 Pet Cemetery movie. In my eyes, this guy is very loyal to his boss, and he helps her with the kidnapping of the babies. Plus, he usually has the job of telling Kira what to do, and he typically relies on brute force instead of relying on coming up with schemes to get what he wants. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Rugrats in Paris is a magnifique sequel. The story is very adventurous, emotional, and heartwarming. The setting in Paris is amazing, and I think Euro Reptar Land is a fantastic looking theme park. Some of the songs on the soundtrack are very nostalgic, while a few others are kind of corny. The main characters are very memorable and fun, while one was very obnoxious. The new characters like Kira and Kimmy are sweet, lovable, and joyful, and I'm glad that they became part of Chucky's family. Also, the villains are absolutely dislikable due to their child-hating persona. Nowadays, not only is this movie a great sequel, but it's also an underrated animated movie. And I highly recommend folks who are either fans of the Rugrats series or Nickelodeon to watch it, especially during Mother's Day. Also, believe me, it's 10 times better than Rugrats Go Wild, which was released three years later. And in case you're wondering, I don't plan on blogging it at all on my show. You're welcome. Anyway, I give Rugrats in Paris a 90% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me next time as we transfer from France to Russia to look at an animated spinoff starring a magnificent white bat. Mustang Power. Oh, and Happy Mother's Day. Mm -hmm.